a week away from training camp, and we also find out another Steelers facing suspension. Yeah, I mean, it must be football season. It sounds about right. It's a disturbing trend now. It seems like we're going into every season with the possibility of a Pittsburgh Steeler facing suspension. And then the more disturbing part of it is Kevin Gorman joins me. <laughs> it's actually because of violations of the league's substance abuse policy. Kevin Gorman, the report comes down this morning, uh, courtesy of ESPN's Dan Graziano, Le'Veon Bell, facing a four-game suspension for violating the policy on substance abuse. But we also find out it is for skipping a drug test, not necessarily failing one. They're viewed the same. Which, they're viewed the same, but if you want to weigh it, this one may be a little bit more egregious, because it's not that you failed, you just missed it. it just That seems more frustrating. Yeah, but, you know, missing it is is akin to failing it in the eyes of the NFL and, the, and under the um, collective bargaining agreement. But it, it's also, you know, from my understanding, the NFL is willing to come to you. When they tell you it's time to take a drug test, it doesn't matter where you are. Uh, you know, you can go take the drug test at another university. There, there's facilities in every city. There, we will come to you, but when it's time for you to take the drug test, that's when you take the drug test. There is no excuse for missing. Um, there's no excuse for failing. There's no excuse for, and, and my understanding as well is that this is, you don't get a four-game suspension for a first-time offense. So, you know, the people that wanted to say, well, Le'Veon Bell is a good guy. It was LeGarrette Blunt's fault that they had the uh, um, the citation on, what was that, up in McKnight Road when they right. were on their way to an, an away game, on the way to the, the flight. You know, now, now you, you have to take some responsibility here if you're Le'Veon Bell. And on the heels of Martavis Bryant facing a suspension, now you lose another major playmaker on an offense that has gone out and said, we want to average 30 points a game. They feel like the offense is capable of carrying this team, which is something you can't say about any of the Super Bowl champion Steelers, that they they were carried by their offense. They were always carried by the number one defense in the NFL. The offense played great at times during the playoffs and even in the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 43, um, you know, for sure. But in this case, not only does it create the headache of how do you replace Le'Veon Bell, you have D'Angelo Williams, but now you need another top-notch tailback. You need to have somebody that if D'Angelo Williams goes down, you have another running back ready to step in and, and carry the load and be a starting tailback in the NFL. But also is, do you have a problem on this team? Do you have a lack of discipline on this team? And do you have guys that maybe aren't all in? You know, that that's it's not even the, the discipline issue to me so much as this is a team that was talking Super Bowl and outwardly saying, hey, this is what we want. This is what we're expecting this year. And that's not to say the Steelers can't overcome that, but now you have Bryant, now you have Bell, and you still have a cloud hanging over James Harrison with the steroid, you know, the steroid uh, policy and his fighting the NFL on that. So you have a team that where you start to wonder where their focus is. You start to wonder if they're all on the same page in terms of wanting the same thing. If, if the Super Bowl was really their main their main priority, although I will remind you that I think they made the Super Bowl 45 on the heels of Roethlisberger having the sexual assault accusations against him and the Steelers being the team that was considered the most headhunters in the NFL with the with the crackdown on the helmet to helmet hits, uh, the Steelers showing up, you know, Heinz Ward at least for one showing up dressed in all black, um, you know. James Harrison talking about Roger Goodell in negative terms. I mean, the Steelers have overcome much more yeah, than this. You have but, to remember that you have a linebacker that called the commissioner the devil. That yeah. that stands out. You, you don't forget that very easily. But but, but by the same token, um, what, what concerns me now is you've lost Heath Miller at tight end, you've lost Martavis Bryant at wide receiver, and you've lost Le'Veon Bell according to this report, for four games. This isn't a season-long thing. But the first four games are important, and that, that offense has certainly diminished in terms of the number of playmakers that it has. And especially when you consider going into, if you remember the playoffs last season, when D'Angelo Williams got hurt and they didn't have Le'Veon Bell. So they had to rely on Jordan Todman and Fitzgerald Toussaint. Now you're going into week one of the season, or the first four weeks of the season, 
with Fitzgerald Toussaint as your backup and, and D'Angelo Williams as your starter. Now, granted, Williams represented himself well as the starter last season when Bell was out. Sure. So that that's we're not taking anything away from D'Angelo Williams, but your running back core, which was considered one of the best coming into the season with Bell and Williams, is now si- significantly diminished. Well, you know, there's still guys out there for one. Reggie, sure. Reggie Bush is a guy who said he was weighing his options. He's the kind of guy, a dual threat running back, uh, as good of a receiver out of the backfield as he is a runner between the tackles. Very similar mold. Could could be a guy that could, he could step in, but is anybody really going to want to come play for the Steelers knowing that it may be a four-game stint and that after four games they are either playing in a diminished role or that they're completely out of out of, you know out of the playing mix? Now, we, we, we know that there's a little bit of more to this story. We know, according to Ian Rappaport, that the Steelers had known for several weeks that it was likely he wouldn't be on the field because of missing drug tests, and that's plural, and I'm sure we'll hear more about it during our coverage here on Trib Live Radio and TribLive.com.